Hello friends. Hello my young learners. I hope all of you are fine and enjoying all your lessons. Today I Rakhi Mishra welcome you all to my session of English class and the unit that we are going to discuss is unit 2 and we'll be taking up poem by Subramanyam Bharti and the name of the poem is wind my dear children the moment you see this visual what comes to your mind something blowing we use different names for wind the moment i say wind sometimes it gives you a very pleasing feeling a very pleasant feel like wind blowing breeze air but at the same time there are moments there are experiences in our life when when wind has shown its tremendous face its furious face and then we we just recall our experiences of cyclone our experiences of strong gales is it not yes it's true my dear friends that wind most of the time we have seen that it has caused destruction but the poet here c subramanyam bharti has tried to convey something some message for all the readers for his countrymen but before we discuss about the poem let us know something about the poet also let us see poet was born on 11 december 1882 in etayapuram and his father was chinnaswami subramanyam ayer and mother lakshmi amal subbaya his schooling was at mdt hindu college tirunavelli he had mastered in several languages like sanskrit hindi telugu english and french his interest or you can say his profession or interest was of variety of various kinds he was a journalist he was a social reformer and he was indian independence activist my dear children here i would like to mention that anything that the poets or the authors write the literature maybe prose poem anything short stories we always see that these forms of writings or literature is actually the reflection of society as i said that he was he were, was born in 1882 and he died in 1921 so uh, he didn't have much of a time in 38 years of life span he has read he has understood the uh, the society so well during the pre independence era that he wanted to pen down he wanted to express and reflect everything through his writings through his poems and this is something that we'll find in his this wonderful piece of writing this poem wind that what he is trying to convey to the indians it is not simply that he is talking about wind he has tried to go beyond that he has tried to make us understand what the what this really what this wind really means now let us see what the poem is all about first let us know something about the poem it is the poet is addressing to the wind and this whole poem is of 23 lines having no stanzas it has mainly two thoughts one thought is talking about the destructive and the constructive nature of the wind and other thought is the lesson that we must learn from wind that is very important here what is the lesson that the poet wants to teach us or we all have to get through this poem through this wind tone is humorous you will find but at times you will also find that he is angry his tone is anger right he is trying to uh, reflect his anger for wind theme of the sto- of this poem main theme that he wants to uh, highlight on 
is that we have to be strong we have to be self reliant we have to be prepared to face the challenges in life and with this just remember these three things be strong be self reliant and be prepared to face the challenges because life is full of challenges we cannot ignore challenges in life life is not a journey which is on a very uh, smooth path you will definitely find ups and downs you will definitely find the uh, challenges coming in your way but through wind we will learn we'll get to know that yes we have to prepare ourselves and we have to be prepared we have to be self sufficient uh, to face these challenges instead of giving up there is no rhyming scheme in the poem and this is in free verse i think all of you know that uh, when there is no rhyming scheme we say it's in free verse right okay now let us read the poem wind come softly don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf there look what you did you threw you threw them all down you tore the pages of the books you brought rain again you were very clever at poking fun at weaklings frail crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters crumbling wood crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts the wind god winnows and crushes them all he won't do what you tell him so come let's build strongholds let's join the doors firmly practice to firm the body make the heart stick fast do this and the wind will be friends with us the wind blows out weak fires he makes strong fires roar and flourish his friendship is good we praise him every day this poem was originally written in tamil language and later on it was translated by another great poet kannada and english poet whose name is ak ramanujan and he is also a classical and you can see he is he is a great uh, classical poet and he has translated many of his uh, poems so this poet poem is basically written in tamil but translated in uh, uh, translated in english from tamil now let us take the poem i have you must have seen i have divided the poem into two parts right first part you see we are just talking about the furious nature of the wind you see how the poet starts the poem wind come softly that means he is addressing in a uh, in a very calm way but at the same time when he sees that when, when he realizes that it's not being heard by the wind then he raises his voice and says wind come softly means he's commanding he's giving a kind of command to the wind don't break the shutters of the windows i hope all of you are following the lines don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf so what does it what does it telling you what does it mentioning what does it uh, trying to um, uh, talk about what are the different destructive activities of the wind here what it what is it doing it's trying to break the shutters of the window whatever papers are kept maybe the poet is busy writing something important and the moment the wind blows what happens the papers are getting scattered here and there and the poet is getting disturbed don't throw down the books on the shelf books which are kept properly on the shelf with lot of care they are being thrown down because of the strong wind there look what you did you threw them all down you tore the pages of the books note the tone of the uh, uh, tone of the poem poet here here he is quite angry he is not very happy with the kind of things that are being done because of the wind because of the furious mood of the wind it is expecting it to be calm but no what it does it comes it blows and it starts disturbing the things right 
displacing the things which were kept properly. You brought rain again. You see, whenever we have a strong wind, sometimes it is followed. Especially, you see, when we have cyclone, right? And uh, what happened is first strong wind, very strong and uh, wind was blowing. And after that, it was followed by a heavy rain, rainfall. So it says that uh, you brought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at the weaklings. This line is very important. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. What do you mean by weaklings? Weaklings here means the weak people. You are very clever. Clever at making fun at the people who are weak. Or the things that are weak. The, the uh, tiny, the uh, tender or you can say the uh, trees which are hardly able to stand. You are, you are just because of your strong power. You are just trying to break them. You are breaking the, crumbling the houses, you are crumbling the doors, crumbling the rafters. Rafters means the poles that are uh, the wooden, you can say log, which is kept as a, as a support. Crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives. You see, it is not just the things that are being crumbled or that are being destroyed. Even the people's lives, you are destroying the lives of the people. And I think if you, um, if you just, when you are reading these lines, you will definitely recollect what had happened to some of the states uh, which had just faced the cyclones, whether in the eastern part of our country or the western part of our country. There was a lot of destruction. And it took, took months or sometimes years to really bring back the things back, uh, in place. So whenever we have such... Uh, experience due to wind, it's really disheartening. It really troubles. It really creates her work. And the poet is pointing out at the wind that you are making fun at those people who are weak or those things which are weak. Here, my dear children, if you have noted that the poet is uh, mainly of the pre-independent era. And you know there was a lot of suppression by the Britishers. People, Indians, the poor Indians were oppressed. They were being, uh, like, they were subjected to a lot of discrimination. They were subjected to a lot of uh, things that were not at all appreciative, appreciable, right? So here we see that the Indians who are weak, the Indians who were weak, he's actually, the um, me, th something, the thought that is there at the back of his mind is about the people. That you are not bothering about the poor people. You are destroying their houses. You are making them so upset. They are, some, some of them even are losing their lives. They are losing their uh, everything. Even they are disheartened. They have lost all their, uh, you can say, uh, hopes. So what is this? Why, why are you doing this? He's addressing, he's talking to the wind. This entire poem is actually being addressed to the poem, po to the wind. Wind is personified here. As if he's, he's able to see wind and talk to wind. That what is it? You, we poor Indians who are uh, oppressed and this wind is actually not the wind that we uh, we always experience, the wind, the air, the breeze that we experience. Here, wind is not just that. Wind is actually the turbulences in our life, the challenges in our life, the difficult moments in our life. And you all have known this. You all, ha you all will agree with me that uh, the time that Indians have uh, faced in the pre-independent era was really very difficult. It was very painful for the people, for the Indians. And it is during that period when this poem was written. So it is reflected here that the weak people, the weak Indians who, were, who had nothing to do, they, they had surrendered. Sometimes we also find we have to surrender. When we are so troubled by the turbulences in our life, we just can't do anything. We have to surrender. So here, as if everything has been destroyed, we are physically, emotionally, mentally destroyed. We are gone. Why is it so? Why are you doing this? 
then he addresses the wind god we knows and crushes them all the wind god yes we do worship wind as god we call wind god and in our culture in indian culture we have seen that wind sometimes the these things like wind we have even mother earth we worship the trees we worship sun we worship moon is it not we have so many other things other than the god and goddesses we have these things also whom we worship so here the poet is addressing the wind god we knows and crushes them all we knows means you must have seen how the uh, indian in indian villages uh, the women the ladies are winnowing it right here it it uh, it is referring to something winnowing is actually a process in which uh, the Uh, the grain or you can say it is separated from the chaff right and it is a it is done only when the wind blows it cannot be done when in a closed room right it has to be done in a in a room uh, in a open area where and the wind has is must so here the poet says that the wind god we knows and crushes them all separates them all separates the people who are weak separates the things that are not wanted so what do we have to do he won't do now in the previous lines you have seen in all these lines the poet is addressing wind he's talking to wind right now we see what is he trying to do he won't do what you tell him here he is referring to wind he won't do what you tell you means the people you tell him so come now we have understood that wind is not ready to listen to us it is it has decided that it is going to destroy and it is going to separate the weaker ones from the stronger ones right and in this process what happens is the, the we have also we also know about the survival of the fittest so those who are strong can survive those who are weak will have to leave will be nowhere in the society we cannot re- exist it is only those who are fit those who are strong enough to withstand the challenges they only can survive so come let's build strong homes and the period through which we are going dear children it is no less than this pandemic is also a challenge for all of us all of us means the entire world and we all have to take it as a challenge and prepare ourselves so well to fight against this challenge to fight against this kind of uh, a big problem that this entire world is facing let's join the doors what is he trying to say what measures do we have to take now what do we have to do we have to make the joints of the doors firmly why because we if we do that then perhaps the strong wind also won't be able to break it practice to firm the body we have to learn to be physically strong firm the body means we have to make ourselves physically strong make the heart steadfast not only physical fitness not only physical uh, uh, strength but we also have to understand that we should be mentally strong we should our heart should be steadfast we should be emotionally very strong we should not get disheartened we should not think that this is the end of life rather we should take these challenges the difficulties in our life convert them into opportunities convert them into your strength your weaknesses should be converted to your strength so do this and the wind will be friend with us if we do that if we learn to be strong enough to make ourselves physically mentally emotionally strong perhaps not perhaps it will definitely happen that anything strong stronger than us which is trying to destroy us will also bow down or will also be friend to us be friends with us the wind blows out weak fires those who are weak weak fires means the fire which is not that uh, uh, or that strong or you can say it's not that powerful that fire will be blown out if wind blows he makes strong fires roar and flourish 
those who are strong just like that wind if you are strong even any difficulty even the wind will help us to grow to flourish in life so these difficulties these challenges in life will help us to grow in life if we face these challenges perhaps we will learn to be stronger will learn to face these challenges in life and will never 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 be scared of these rather we, whenever it comes whenever difficult moments in our life comes whenever we have the hardships in life will be ready will be prepared we will tell ourselves that we are ready to face it his friendship is good we praise him every day so here we see that friendship with the wind is also good because without wind we can't think of our life when the wind stops there's no, when we feel that there is no wind blowing what happens we feel suffocated we immediately say that there's no wind today it's so suffocating we don't feel comfortable so it is also must you just think of the sailors sailors can't think of moving if we if there is no wind so it is a friend to some people sometimes it is also our friend it's not that it is always in a destructive mood we praise him every day we'll see that if we understand the role of wind maybe sometimes we see a different nature of the wind we see that it is in a destructive mood we don't appreciate it we don't take it but remember these winds these obstacles these hindrances these difficulties these challenges in our life will help us to become stronger and stronger every day you will learn to be stronger you see during this period when you all uh, were uh, you were all confined at home you all were thinking now what will happen when when our classes will start when will our school start are we really going to go to school or is it the end but you see the things gradually are taking shape gradually the things are back to the place things are improving and it is because we did not give up we did not say we can't do it every moment every difficult moment that we all we all indians or you can say the people of the world have faced we are taking it as a challenge and we are trying to make ourselves strong so with this the poem ends with a very good message that how wind from or, or how we can learn a lesson from wind that wind has to face has two sides or you can say two faces one is its destructive mood another is its constructive mood it is not that it is also always spoiling us or it is always disturbing us or it is always destroying our lives no it is not that sometimes it is also must and it works like a friend it is only that we have to take these winds the this mo- these moments of difficulties which are nothing like nothing less than the wind we have to take this as a challenge face it and move ahead now let us have a quick summary of through the uh, of the whole poem through this a uh, pictorial representation we see destructive mood of the wind what are the destruct destructive mo- how we can say what all things we said that it brings rain yes it brings rain but sometimes it brings rain to an extent that it causes lot of damage it scatters everything you place something here but with the strong wind blowing the things will be scattered here and there and you will find it so difficult to again gather it and put it in order throws down the books of on the shelf that is what i said again it is showing its destructive mood breaks the shutters of the window you keep the windows closed but again because of the wind things will be again you know it will be destroyed you see what is the impact of the wind because of its destructive mood what does it do it destroys weak houses it breaks the windows it breaks the doors it destroys lives yes people also have to uh, people uh, you'll find that so many people they die because of uh, the strong wind 
accompanied by rain and flood and all that it happens damages the rafters or the roofs people who are somehow managing to have some kind of roof taking the help of rafters that also gets damaged the best example if you want to understand here is those places those uh, states of our country which uh, had recently in the in the last two years you will see that uh, some of the country uh, some of the states in our country they have really faced these situations so best way to understand is that you'd see how they have faced the cyclone and what all what is the impact of that and it disappoints the people yes it disappoints the people because they have to remain without food without electricity without water without shelter for so many months people really cry because they are they, they have to live they have to manage with that hunger without food so the life becomes a challenge then every moment becomes a challenge at the same time it winnows and crushes the ones which are weak taking it the example of winnowing the god wind god winnows and separates yes it separates the weaker ones from the stronger ones constructive nature of the wind it's not that it is only the uh, destructive but there are certain things which are constructive as i said winnowing cannot be done when there is no wind we have wind mills there are certain states where wind energy is used to run these windmills and they are further used converted into different form of energy which are again used in uh, converted into electrical energy and all that power right so wind the uh, it is somewhere it is used to generate uh, electricity it's not that it is always destructive it is always doing destruction no sometimes it is also helping us and without wind movement movement will not be possible you see the sailors it is not possible for them to move if there is no wind so it is also having a constructive nature so that is the balance everything has got every coin has got two sides good and the bad the positive and the negative we was we just should not think or accept that no something is only good or something is only bad everything has got two sides now let us have a quick uh, recap of uh, the poem it is addressing to the wind and it is showing two major phases of the wind wind's life as i said uh, here the poet has personified wind considered it to be just like us just like any person and share, sharing us sharing with us that the wind has at moments you'll find wind behaving like a child and some moment you'll find wind behaving like a youth Adver uh, adversities of life yes wind is uh, uh, symbolizing adversities of life challenges of life life is not always smooth and we also have to appreciate the power of wind appreciate as well as we have to prepare ourselves keeping in mind what powerful what what a powerful thing this wind is it can ha it can destroy us so we have to prepare ourselves preparedness for facing these challenges is must because of the power of the wind and it is not only important for us to be physically strong but we have to be mentally emotionally strong and here in the end the poet has compared wind with god it is friend with wind we have to understand that it is it is to be it is worshiped like god at the same time we have to be we have to accept that wind also shows its furious face right and when it shows it it brings lot of destruction but this also teaches us that be self reliant be prepared you should have proper preparedness otherwise you cannot withstand this right so i think the poem is clear to all my learners now let me quickly tell you what are the poetic devices yes we have several poetic devices used here by the poet first is anaphora what is anaphora anaphora is word repeated at the start of two or more lines like don't 
is repeated in line number 2, 3 and 4 and then uh, U is repeated in line 6, 7 and 8. So this poetic device is and why is it used? Anything that is being repeated, remember, it is to emphasize on certain things. So here he is, the poet is trying to emphasize on what destruction or what is the intensity of the destruction or what kind of things it destroys or disturbs, right? Okay, next is personification. Personification, as I said that here the poet starts con the poem with a conversation. Conversation with the, po uh, with the wind. So the wind is personified, is considered somebody like us. Right, And here the poet is addressing wind, sometimes like a child, sometimes like a youth. And it's trying to talk to the wind. Right, That's why in line number, you see in uh, the th third uh, part of the poem, if you see, he won't do what you tell him. In, th in this particular line, you can understand that poet is referring wind as he is referred to wind here. That means he has... The poet has used personification here. Now, repetition. Here, uh, it's uh, repeated. Crumbling, crumbling, crumbling. So many times it has been repeated. That, that is to emphasize on the destructive nature of the wind. Alliteration. What does it mean? Alliteration is when you have the initial consonant sound being repeated. You see, so wind winnows. So, wah, wah is repeated won't want won't want so it is were that is being repeated right so whenever you have the initial consonant sound being repeated in the two uh, consecutive words then we say it is alliteration then we have symbolism yes wind is is symbolized here wind is symbolized as what as i clearly mentioned in my discussion that wind is symbolized as the challenges in life Yes, it is not simply we are talking about the wind or the poet has talked about the wind. But poet wants us to understand that wind means, wind means difficulties. Wind means challenges in life. Wind, wind means turbulences in life, right? And there are several idioms, several uh, phrases uh, using the wind, right? In your colloquial language, in your mother tongue also, you must have... Uh, heard several uh, such uh, phrases or idioms being used uh, where wind is referred and it is showing that it means turbulences, it means difficulties. So what is the message of this poem? Challenges are part of our life. We cannot ignore challenges. We cannot just say that our, my life would be free of challenges. Never. Ne it is never possible. Stronger would always try to destroy the vehicle. Yes, wind is stronger. And it will always try to destroy the weaker one. Suppress the weaker one. The Britishers, they were, they were trying to suppress the Indians. You see how Indians uh, fought for that. So difficult. It was such a tough time for all the Indians. All those freedom fighters. Right? So, but... We did not give up. We fought back and we finally got our independence. Make yourself strong. Be prepared to face the challenges. Make yourself strong. Don't give up. Be physically, mentally and emotionally strong to withstand turbulences in life. If you just give up, then the one which is stronger will take it as a fun and will laugh at you and will remain stronger and will think that they have already surrendered. Never surrender. You try, you fight, fight and fight. These are some of the questions from your text. What are the things the wind does? You have to refer to line number 2 to 5. It's clearly given. What does the poet say? The wind god winnows. It winnows the weaker one from the, uh, uh, the stronger one or the ones which are lighter and heavier. It separates them. What should we do to make friends with the god? We have to, we have to make ourselves strong and we have to understand that it also brings some good things for us. It also helps us. What do the last four lines of the poem mean to you? Just think, what does it mean? It is referring, again, it, it is trying to convey a message to you. What, how does the poet speak to the wind? Is it in anger or with humor? It is mostly in anger because poet uh, is not very happy with the kind of 
mood, the kind of nature the wind has shown to the human beings or the difficulties or you can say the Britishers have done to the Indians is not very happy with it. You must have seen or heard of the wind crumbling lives. What is your response? Is it the same that of poet? Think on this. With this, I conclude my discussion. Assuming that all of you have carried that message with you that we have to learn to be strong both physically and emotionally and have the feeling that never give up. Have the determination in your life that we will never give up, we will always face the challenges and will prove ourselves stronger than the ones who try to be stronger than us. Thank you so much. Have a good day.